this job that I thought I had for life was now under threat. We were robbed of livelihood, we were robbed of future, our communities were robbed of future. I'm Bob Young, I'm 80 years old and I was the chairman of the union at Comrie Colliery in Fife. My pals were all going to the mining industry so I decided that that's where I was going. So at 14 years and 10 months I started work at the Francis Colliery through in, in the Kirkcaldy. I love the pit for many reasons. Uh, one of them was the, the camaraderie down the pit. You know, you, people that, that you trusted, you trusted them with your life. You were able to build a home, you were able to, to buy a car, you were able to do things assuming that you were going to have money for the rest of your life till your retirement day. The closure plans are precisely what the Miners' Union feared would happen in Scotland. We thought, well, they might shut the pits that are not making money, then we found out that they were going to shut pits in areas that were predominantly union-led and proactive. So I wrote down to headquarters and invited Arthur Scargill to come to the pit. And we went into the Long Falls, so six and a half miles from the pit bottom to the, the face line, and uh, we come back up the pit. They asked by a reporter, what about the strike at Cornwood? And that was the, the start of the strike. The scuffles continued and the arrests mounted. Police charged a picket line in Scotland today as miners tried to stop lorries of coal. The fight was to save our jobs. There was nothing about wages or conditions, and it was just to save the pits. And of course the government were arguing that they were not threatening to close any pits, which we now know wasn't true. I suppose the one that caused the, the biggest problem was at Loch Gelly at Cartmore. Well, every one of us got charged, and two of us out of the 133 got sacked. I was convicted at Dunfermline Sheriff Court of resisting, obstructing, and molesting and hindering peace officers in the execution of their duty. About 100 miners did brave the picket line. The, the police had, a, had a, a clear remit that they could do whatever they liked and there were no repercussions. We found that uh, our phones were being tapped. I had my windows broke, my cats got poisoned. We were thugs, we were flying pickets. We, we got all these names. I mean, Thatcher called us the enemy within. This was the same enemy within, by the way, that had been down in the bowels of the earth, keeping this country running. I know guys who were arrested, who lost their jobs, uh, who were vilified. I know two of them who unfortunately took their lives. It's actually been devastating in our communities. We are now, 40 years later, and the sons and daughters that were born when the strike was on are still not in work. It was a huge spill-off industry that people didn't see. Would I do the same thing again? I would, I would do the same things today and fight for people's futures and supporting each other. That's surely what life's all about, you know?